Hello and welcome to my knife channel. Well, I didn't find my other machete, but I did find this thing that, as you can tell, I used quite a bit. I didn't clean this up just to show you something or... Anyways, it's... I'm going to switch the video to a closer up view. I mean, i switch it from wide angle because I keep bumping this. And I'll go into zoom in mode. But this is a pretty cool little solid one piece um like samurai sword. It's not you know, they have the, the three piece uh samurai set and they have the you know, each one has a different name, you know, what's it Watsatubi and all these other things and katana and you know, all that other stuff, but this one would be like the medium size one. It's got like a 16 inch blade. And this little cutout notch right here works really well. It didn't come with this paracord on there. I did this a long time ago. And this actually helps in control, you know, when holding it. I don't remember how much I paid for it. But this is a very useful size uh, mostly I would use it for like if I was working on a yard or something trimming grass you know like edging you would get between the concrete and just slap like that so it's a beater knife basically and it it's pretty good for what it does you know <laughs> you're not worried about, it didn't come with a sheath I used to just keep this in the back of my jeep and uh, I've got a, a seal that need to be replaced, basically, on the back window of the Jeep. I didn't realize it, uh, because for when I bought my Jeep, I was in New Mexico, so it hardly ever rained there. It's a desert environment. And when I moved here to Texas, I forgot about what rain does. And I realized later on that I had that seal loose, because it rusted a bunch of tools I had back there and everything else. But anyways, I pulled this out. And I'm going to switch the video over now to like a closer up so we can see what's going on here. All right. Oh, yeah. Bump it. Why don't you? <clears throat> so, I should probably Google this and look in Google Translate and try to figure this out. It's made in China. What those Chinese characters say is like, you sucker, you just bought this stinking it's a sword. You Americans, so stupid. I think that's what it translates to. Anyways, it says stainless china. And as you can see, now some of this is like with steel wool off. But stainless doesn't mean stain proof, you know. And this one was left in like an untreated condition, unpolished. I don't think I ever put any oil on it. Sorry, I'm bumping that. Um, but this little cutout, like I said right here, really helps for fine control. You put your thumb on the back of the spine. This thing's pretty thick, too. Um, and, let me see, I have my calipers out here. I'll measure how thick the spine is. Point one six or... 4.23 millimeter. So, yeah, but it's pretty handy. Now, when I had a, a house back in New Mexico, I practiced this one time. You know, I've got a longer, a regular size samurai sword. And I had this medium one. And I had another uh, medium you know, when I, I had that whole set, you know, with the three different swords, but I tried this one. And in hallways and everything else, these are much better for, like, if it was a, your self-defense weapon. Because if you miss with a sword in a confined space, the it's going to stick in the drywall. And I wasn't actually swinging and wiping out my house in New Mexico, you know, and sticking the sword in the drywall. But something like this, you can just pull back. And it covers your whole body, you know, the whole front of your body if somebody was trying to rush you or kick you or whatever. And you can easily convert it into a straight-in stab or a slash. 
And uh, it's really hard to do that with a, a longer samurai sword. There's like a useful limit in close quarters combat, basically, uh, for a knife. Now this, you know, you don't have to get involved in close quarters combat or anything, but uh, these are also useful for like a, like a machete. You know, it's about the same size as, it's. this one's just a little bit longer overall than that jungle machete I showed you. Uh, the handles are, I don't know how they're attached, glued on, or riveted or whatever, but you can see it's a full tang because it's showing on both sides of it. And, uh, I think I got it at Bud K a long time ago. I would say, like, 2000, the year 2000, somewhere around there. But, yeah, pretty useful. Um, pretty useful size and everything. So, just wanted to show that to you. So upon another one of the, um, I guess we would call it apartment home defense series or whatever, you know. <laughs> because, uh... You know, an apartment, I don't have to trim the grass anymore. It's not my grass. But uh, this would be good as a little brush weapon, too. And all I need really do is just make a sheath for it. I could probably make something as simple as, you know, like a wooden sheath where you just take two pieces of wood and then you join them together however you want, you know, rivets or... If you're really good at carving, you could make it to where it fits in there, in there like a sheath. Um, if you're going to use nylon or something else like that, or, you know, cordure or whatever, just be sure to use rivets, you know, along there to protect. It's, it's, um, that's there so that if you slip and fall, if you've just got nylon on a sharp blade or whatever, it can come out of the sheath and the thing could, you know, impale you or cut you or whatever. So that's the purpose behind those rivets on there. But yeah, I'll take some steel wool or something on this. It's another advantage of a beater knife. You don't have to worry about how you're going to, you know, like maybe scratch up the finish. And uh, I'm going to try Google Translate on this and see what it comes up with. And I'll try to put that in the description or something. But um, see how far off um, my translation was from Google Translate. So there you go. It's a little beater knife. Comes in handy for lots of things. As Jimmy Slash would say, you know, this would be a good anti-hobo knife. He's got a thing against hobos, I guess, or hobos are an issue. You know, I lived in Houston, where he did. I grew up in Houston, and uh, we did have a lot of trains that go through there. But I never re remembered hobos being an issue. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.